Hello, everybody, and thank you for joining us on the Brainstorming to Book Sales podcast. I am Shannon Whittington, and I am an author coach and a publisher, and I have even helped author some books myself. And on our podcast, we like to talk to people to learn more about the story behind the story. And today we are visiting with Ian Rupert. Ian is not yet an author, but has ideas and possibilities and may be going down that road. So we're going to talk with him about really why he hasn't quite taken that leap yet and maybe get him to share some of his ideas and see if we can't help him take that leap and finally get into writing his book and sharing his story. So Ian, thank you very much for joining us today. I'm happy to have you here. Well, thanks for having me. So you want to maybe someday possibly be an author? Yes. Um, <laughs> I've, I've been kicking it around for a couple years now. Um, I just, I kind of want to document some of the things that I've been through and in real estate and insurance and things like that. And I think I could maybe help some people, so. So would this be more of a business type book, more of a life experience book? Kind of what would it be looking like? Um, I Well, kind of my initial thought is that it would be a business book for sure and help other entrepreneurs, probably especially in real estate, but it might bleed over into other industries avoid a lot of the mistakes that I've made. Mm. That's kind of my initial thoughts to it. You know, it kind of gives a little bit more purpose to those mistakes when you can actually share your lessons and try to help other people avoid them. Yes. So that's, that's kind of my thinking. I don't know. I don't know how it would turn out. I'm, I, I don't even know what to expect. I haven't even started writing or anything like that. So that's okay. You have an idea. Yeah, I just have an idea at this point. And that's where all books start. Well, that's awesome. They all start with an idea. They don't just magically appear. So it's good to have an idea. And then you just really start to work through that in your mind and on paper. And before you know it, everything is starting to take shape a little bit. And suddenly it's not quite so overwhelming. And you can delve in and before you know it, you have a book. So I've had that sounds more... fantastic. <laughs> right. I've had more people say, I just started writing and then I think this is a book. Can you help me turn it into a book? Sure we can. So okay. sometimes people almost accidentally write a book. It's kind of fascinating to me. I, I don't think I could unintentionally do that, just the way my brain works, but mm. It fascinates me that some people, they just get going and even their journaling seems to take shape and be colorful and flavorful and I'm like, oh my gosh, that is a talent I do not possess, but it's fun to watch it happen. And I'm like, that'd be easy to turn that into a book. Let's do it. So well, you, def you definitely have a skill set I do not have. <laughs> <laughs> so. <laughs> so what has really stopped you from just beginning the process? Well, I went through a lot of uh, business failure, and so I'm still kind of closing that chapter of my life out and getting back on my feet. And so I've been really focused on just kind of pivoting and uh, making money and, you know, working every day uh, to kind of get things back where they should be and so you know it's kind of been on the back burner so what I'm hearing there is kind of the time commitment yes yes and ironically I actually hate reading books I, ha I hate reading and uh, now <laughs> now but then I went to see a mentor about a few years ago and he's like well now you can listen to audiobooks so once I discovered audiobooks I was like oh okay but I still I still ask my mentor like what books to read because I did not want to go try a whole bunch of stuff out and fill my head with all these books. So <laughs> they, gave, they gave me some good ones. I listened to those and uh, that, that was life changing. In fact, if I hadn't have went through that mentorship, things would have been much more than just business failures. It would have been just life failures and crashes all around me. So 
it, uh, it definitely helped. And so knowing that you've been helped by some books that were recommended to you, it kind of makes sense that you would in turn want to put that same type of product out for somebody else. Well, I never thought of it that way, but that's actually a really good point. I, um, yeah, the books that I've, I've listened to have just been life changing and I wish I would have had the mentoring and the books. I wish I'd have listened to them even two years prior and everything would be completely different. So. What was your favorite book that you read during this period? Um, let's see. So I usually tell people the entrepreneurial myth by Michael E. Gerber. Um, mm -hmm. He narrates his own book and his voice is very engaging. So I never had, you know, never got bored with it. Um, I, I also like the fact I could get through a book in like eight hours, you know, six to eight hours. And I, I listened to uh, multiple e-myth books. So that's one of the, one of the best ones. Um, and then the four hour work week by, um, his name is escaping me at the moment. He's mm -hmm. super popular. You know what, I'm, yep. I know who you're talking about too. I'm terrible, terrible at remembering names right on the spot. So I don't blame you there. Yeah. Uh, but the four so, hour work week is a good book. Yes. Yes. Um, so those two, even just those two were, were life changing. Uh, i Golly, I'd be doing so many different things if I just listened to them a little earlier. So. <laughs> but it wasn't the right time. So there's a chance that you wouldn't have because you wouldn't have been receptive to it. Oh, that's true. Yeah, I guess. So, you know, that whole I, everything in its time. Yes. Yeah. And I'm a little hard headed. So, you know, mentors had to soften my, my head up a little bit. And uh, I guess that opened me up to the ideas in those books and I had to go through some failures in order to get be more receptive. That's probably a that's probably a true true statement. Oh, and those failures! I tell you what, you know, I think one of the best things I ever read, and I don't even know where I saw it, but it's everywhere, really. But there are no failures. There's just opportunities. True. There's been definitely um, lots of really good things have come out of everything I've been through. So I kind of want to. I, you know, as far as the book idea, I'm thinking, put out the mistakes, put out how I fixed, because I fixed a lot of things. I just didn't fix them in time to mm -hmm. save, save that part of the business. And so I kind of want to put the, the problems, the solutions, um, and maybe expand on that just a little bit. That, that's kind of my idea, idea for the book so far. I like it. So a little bit of authenticity, a little bit of rawness some real stuff out there uh, would you do you think that you'll come at it from a like just very very vulnerable position or do you think you'll come at it more from a instructor style position um probably some of both probably a little more vulnerable than instructor style um i want people to relate and to feel like, you know, they're not the only ones going through whatever it is they're going through, that there's someone else that went through that. And so I think that that would help kind of reach them. Absolutely. And it's one of those things, I mean, there's so many books on business, as you know. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times people get afraid to write their story because they figure it's been done. But the thing about it is, your voice, your experiences, they're unique to you. And so only you can portray them in a way that is going to resonate with somebody out there that they're maybe not going to resonate with another book. And just like with you, I mean, there's so many business books, yet you could tell me two right off the top of your head that truly got you. Mm -hmm. yep. Even though you've, you know, read several others also. So yes, I mean... So I love about those books that there really was no fluff. Like I don't want there, and if I write a book, I am planning on it, but I don't, I don't want there to be any fluff in it either. I kind of want it to follow the same. In fact, to give you an example, there is an e-myth book on brokerages and I didn't even know this when I started uh, listening to it, but it was about a brokerage that failed and, and you don't really find out about it till later in the book, but um, 
I thought that was really an interesting approach. I didn't realize that people even wrote books like that. So. <laughs> yes, indeed. Uh, there's a lot of pow power in perceived failure. And especially when you can take that as a lesson, turn it to an opportunity and make it into a positive. So it sounds like that's something that you're absolutely able to do with what you've gone through and that you've come out on the other side of it ready to ready to not only better yourself and move forward but put that hand out for others who are ready and willing to say yeah I felt too but I'm ready to turn around also let me know what you did let me see what I can do and I think that's awesome Cool. So that that's great. I uh, I don't. You're probably the first person I've really even talked to about it that much. <laughs> so I I well, really appreciate it. You've clearly put a lot of thought into it. Um, what you need to do now is change your words from if to when. And so it's when you'll write a book, not if you'll write a book. And as far as that time commitment aspect of it. With a book like what you're wanting to do, you could very easily break it down into chunks, if you will, and really release yourself of that overwhelm of, oh my gosh, I have to write a book. It doesn't have to be that daunting. You can seriously write it in 100 to 500 word pieces, which is a blog post. You know, so it's really not as overwhelming as it may seem if you're sitting there just looking at a blank page and thinking I need to go from beginning to end. That's overwhelming. But when you break it down into little sections and subsets, <clears throat> and then even a subset of the subset, you end up with these tiny pieces that you can write about just in an evening. And you'll end up feeling so much accomplishment from that and it'll start to all flow and come together and suddenly it's not so overwhelming and you can actually track your progress and see how close you're getting to the end because you've already mapped the book out. And so you know where the end is going to be, which makes that feeling of accomplishment much easier and you're being able to accomplish in small steps all along the way instead of not being able to celebrate anything until it's completely done. So definite ways to take out that feeling of overwhelm and the fear of not having time. So what would you say is the most important um, topic or information that readers would be interested in related to real estate and you know uh, business problems, business failures now we're calling opportunities <laughs> what, do you, what do you think uh, what do you think readers would want to hear like what would be the most important thing to them what what gets them to buy the book I should say so they're definitely going to want to know if you're if you're coming at it from that failure perspective overcoming failure what they're really going to want to know is your biggest your biggest failure People, people want to see the ugly. It, you know, it's stopping to look at the accident because you don't really want to see the gore, but do you get to see the gore? Like they, they're intrigued by that aspect of the story. Doesn't mean you start with it, right? Because you don't want them to just read the first chapter and be like, well, that was cool, I'm done. You want to, you know, build up to that. But being able to share that one pivotal moment, there may have been several failures, right? I mean, in, in real estate, there, there's so many opportunities to crash and burn, but whatever that one pivotal moment was for you that finally got you to say enough is enough, I'm ready to fix this, I'm ready to get a mentor, I'm ready to like do all these things that needs to be a core part of your book, of your story. Because that's the, that's the pivotal moment for you. And people are going to want to learn about that. They're going to want to hear about it. Now, it's not going to be the same for them. They're going to have their own pivotal moment. 
that they'll be able to see how you use that to better yourself rather than to accept defeat. Well, I definitely have that moment. Um, in fact, I've, I've told several people about it. So I, I, that's an excellent idea. And that's going to be also one of the hardest because it's going to be the most raw. And for a lot of people, that's when you're like, okay, do I really want to share that? Because that's like true vulnerability, right? You're, you're really saying, this is where I messed up. This is, this is where I crashed and burned. This is where I almost lost it all. This is, it, it just gets, it gets difficult in that moment. And a lot of people, when they're writing, that's when they're going to want to stop. They may have already written two thirds of their book and now they hit this and they're like, I just, I can't, I can't do it. I can't go forward. I'm stuck. I'm done. It's too much. In that moment, and you'll feel it, it'll happen. That, and I tell everybody this. So if you've listened to very many of these, you're going to be like, here it comes. But this is when you have to remember exactly who you're writing your book for. Because there's one person out there, one person who needs to hear your, your story, your unique experience. Somebody needs to hear that. And it's going to bring them to their own pivotal moment. It's going to be the story they hear that finally resonates and clicks and helps them turn their life around. And so you have to realize when you get to that point, it's no longer about you. The story is about you, but why you're doing it isn't about you. It's about somebody else. And if you can focus on that person instead of your own fears, it'll help you push through when you get there. And it also will really intensify your writing because the emotion is going to pour into it. Wow, that was really good. I love that. Um, <laughs> I, uh, I'm like, he just went silent. What happened? <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I mean, I'll never forget that day. It was, I looked at my, my bank accounts. I had no money in the bank. I had 13, maybe 15 vacancies at 1500 a month and 15, like $50,000 in property damage to fix, and I had no earthly idea how to do it. Um, I considered bankruptcy, and uh, they would have ended up hurting a lot of people, and so instead, I we dumped everything we had, every asset, every dollar, every retirement account, and spent the next uh, year and a half or so unraveling that part of the business, and um, luckily, it it turned out okay. People were satisfied for the most part, but um, it's, I, I think I'd be okay with um, putting that out there and, and getting it in, you know, in words and specifics. And I, well, I think I'd be okay with that. You know, you, when you talk about that aspect of real estate, so it's more on the investing side. There are so many coaches out there that only talk about how wonderful it can be to invest and the freedom that can come with investing and just the highs. You hear all about the highs because they want to sell you, right? They want you to be like, oh, wow, look at what they've done. I want to go learn from them and I'm going to be a millionaire in a year and, <laughs> you know, and so to have somebody who is willing to say, pump the brakes, it can get ugly, it can get messy, it can hurt. I think it's really smart because people just trying to walk into that industry, they need their eyes open to the potential pitfalls. I mean, they need that. And it's, I've dabbled, I, I've looked into it myself, and there's not a whole lot out there with, you know, the beware sign on it. It's all, if you're not investing in real estate, well, like, you, you know, they just, they want everybody to be excited and, and they should be, I'm not saying not to be, but eyes wide open is very important. And I think a book like yours is going to help people kind of pump the brakes a little bit and not keep them from doing it, not scare them out of it, 
but just make sure they're aware. So like you're saying, they can possibly avoid some of the mistakes that you had to experience. Well, it's very, um, it, it's very cool to hear someone else, you know, give me that feedback because I just, you know, when you go and you think you might want to write a book, you don't know, you know, it could be a horrible idea. I don't know. I don't know if people will <laughs> read. I don't know if anyone will even care. Um, and so I, I definitely appreciate the feedback. Well, think about who would care. Think about how it would have helped you when you first started. Think about the next young real estate investor who, you know, is going to his first REI meeting and has no idea what to expect or what he's getting into and all the quote unquote coaches are going to be at that meeting and try to reel them in. And if he were able to get your book, those coaches could do great things and they could mentor him fantastically, but he's also going to know what to be watching for as he starts to get his feet wet. Yeah, that sounds great. I mean, I would love to, even if only a few people um, don't burn and crash and burn, you know, <laughs> based, on, based on some of the things I went through, it would be totally worth it. Even if one person, like it if I were totally able to save their worth. life, save their you know, marriage, a lot of people, their, their relationships fall apart, family falls apart. Luckily, mine is intact and we are doing really good, but you know, I know people do struggle with that, and I, I kind of, that's another reason I'd like to help someone not go through that, those particular experiences. Well, and that could be a whole other part of your book, is how to maintain the relationship through the pitfalls of real estate investing. I mean, that's, that's such a true thing, especially if only one of you is truly the investor, and you have these things happen that affect the entire family and you're going to shoulder the burden and your spouse has to feel it and it may not understand all of it. You know, I mean, it can get really messy uh -huh. and to be able to help somebody understand how to navigate that and how to come out. Okay. So that on top of losing properties and businesses, you're not also losing a marriage. I think that's a, that would be huge. Wow. That's cool. I didn't even think about that at all. That's awesome. That's a great idea. <laughs> so idea. You, you definitely have a good idea. I mean, I could sit here and brainstorm it with you for a really long time. Um, so I do hope that you will consider moving forward with that and definitely work on it and, and hopefully get that published. And there's a huge market, huge market for sure. So if I understand the steps, um, I need to map out the book, just an overall idea, kind of break it down into pieces. Mm -hmm. And then once I start like writing things down, who, if there's one thing I learned from strength finders, it's that I need a filter. <laughs> How do I get that filter? Because I, you know, I, I have lots of ideas, but that doesn't necessarily mean they're going to be what, viable and work and all of that. What kind of filter are you looking for? Um, someone to just go through the things that I write and make sure they are sound good, sound, or I don't know if good's the right word, but are helpful you know the whole idea behind the book is helpful i don't want to mm -hmm. put a whole bunch of stuff out there that aren't isn't going to be helpful to people and um so i need i probably would need someone to filter that stuff and i don't yes. know so what you would do is you get it all written okay and you just write it right okay and without worrying about filtering it now, I mean, yes, there's going to be things that you're going to read and be like, oh, that's not how I meant for that to sound. And you're going to rewrite it, whatever. That's, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about like, just let yourself tell the story. Okay. And then you can do two things. And I suggest you do them both. You can have it edited, of course, right? So an editor is going to go through and they're going to do the mundane spelling, punctuation, grammar, 
but they can also check for content flow and give you feedback on, okay, you said this, but that doesn't really make sense. Or you were talking about this and now you're talking about something that should probably be in this part of the book instead, like it doesn't go together. They can give you that kind of feedback mm -hmm. and help you make it a good cohesive book. You can also have it reviewed by peers. Um, since it's for people to help them avoid the mistakes as they get into investing, I would actually even maybe visit an REI meeting and see if there is somebody new there and ask them if they would be willing to read it and give you feedback. So you would have this novice investor being able to read it and they could either be like, oh my God, thank you so much. I had no idea. Or they'd be like, dude, this is stuff. This is like so elementary or mm -hmm. it doesn't really make sense to me. And then, you know, maybe you're above them. Maybe, maybe you're talking on too high of a level and you need to bring it down a little bit. Like just being able to get that kind of feedback from somebody who happens to be your target could be huge. Um, That's excellent. So I would definitely do those things. And then you have a little bit of rework, right? So you're gonna take the feedback, use what you want, discard what you don't. It's still your book. So you then have to have your own filter to be able to distinguish what feedback you want to accept and reject. Do your final write and then have it edited for a final time and then you publish. And somewhere in there you do a cover design and you... <laughs> Okay. I'm like, I'm just writing this stuff down. I really. <laughs> oh. So, yeah, I mean, it's the steps aren't that menacing. It's really just about getting the book out. Okay. Being able to like get it out of you and onto quote unquote paper. Well, that's great. Um, that'll help me a lot because I mean, part of the the hold back and writing a book is oh, all these things I'm going to have to get done and when am I going to be able to do all that and the only thing you have to do is write the book everything else gets delegated well it makes sense now that you're saying it but <laughs> it's like but if you're a methodical analytical thinker you're going to try and make sure you have all your bases covered before you yeah. get started, right? Right, that's what I do. Yeah. So you have the steps, you know what you're gonna need. You're gonna need an editor. You're gonna need a couple people to review it. You're gonna need someone to create a cover for you. And if time is an issue, you're gonna want someone to help you get it published. So those are the people that you'll need. And as long as you know that you're gonna have that help, then that takes away that burden for you. And all you have to do is write. Well, that sounds so much easier than it did 20, <laughs> 30 minutes ago, so. <laughs> well, I'm glad, I'm glad. It's not meant to be a scary endeavor. It's, it's meant to go smooth and, and really be pretty pleasant because at the end of the day, you're doing what you want to do and you're helping somebody with everything that you've gone through. We call it purpose in the pain. So. Okay. So how did you fit into all of that? The book, the book industry, the book, the authoring and all, well, where do you fit in all that? So well, I hardly ever talk about me on these. So I am a coach and a publisher and I do some editing. So really I do a lot of it. I can coach people through the entire process, um, hence brainstorming to book sales. Hmm. So from beginning the outline all the way through publishing and marketing and everything in between. And if for some reason I'm not a good fit for somebody, I have other connections to help them through different parts. Or if they just want to be shown how to self-publish, I can guide somebody through the process on how to do that if they don't necessarily wanna to pay to have it done for them. So really I can 
help with all aspects. Aside from reviews, I don't do reviews. I get too bogged down in what I do to be able to be that subjective. I want to be able to like just get in there and edit and do what I do. I don't want to just give feedback. So, <laughs> okay. but nice. everything else I can do, um, I do have my publishing company. Oh, okay. And so I do publish and yeah, I, I really enjoy helping people go from, I'm not sure to holding the first copy of their book. All right. It's pretty incredible. And always, always, if I'm not the right person to help somebody, then I have a really nice network of people that I can refer out to. So it's all about making sure that those books get out one way or another. Right on. Okay. That's cool. I, I had no idea about any of that about you. So <laughs> you're like, it's just this podcast lady. <laughs> I, well, I, I went out on the limb. I'm like, I'll do it. I mean, I, I'm like, I'm trying to kind of get things going with it. And so I was like, I'm just going to do it. I'm not going to ask any questions beforehand. I'm not going to, you know. Well, it's a fantastic first step. And hopefully you are inspired and motivated. And I'll be hearing from you at some point saying, I did it. So okay. that would You'll be fantastic. You'll probably be hearing from me before that. but <laughs> Awesome. Is there anything else you want to chat about while we're on? You know, if, um, I, I mean, I just have no idea about getting a book published at all. I mean, does it, do authors, do I need to, you know, new authors need to plan on a budget of some kind and what's the timeline look like? And you know, it is all so unique to each individual, truly. Okay. Um, okay. That's like asking what somebody should budget to buy a house. I mean, maybe not in such grandiose numbers, but you know, each person is going to be so incredibly different on what they can do themselves, what they want to outsource, how they want it done. Um, so as far as budgeting, you can literally do it all on your complete own for absolutely nothing, but you're going to have to learn how to do it all. Mm -hmm. And so we're talking from zero dollars to there are some vanity publishers out there that charge all the way up to $25,000. Ridiculous. Please don't do that. Okay. Um. <laughs> well, that, that's actually great information. That's, um, it's less than I thought it would be. So, you know, I have no idea. I, I wouldn't even know. Yeah. So it's, it's so fluid. Uh, the self-publishing world really you want to be ready to pay for an edit and that's going to be anywhere from several hundred dollars to a couple thousand dollars depending on who you use and what they charge okay uh, you want a book cover and depending on how specific and glamorous you want your book cover to be you can do something as simple as using a designer on fiverr and pay anywhere from 25 to $50 all the way up to a local designer that can charge anywhere from 500 to a couple thousand dollars. So okay. you can see how really fluid it is and how you can really determine your own budget and what that's going to look like. Um, where you publish can be anywhere from nothing to about 200 bucks if you're doing it yourself. So it's, or even if you, like when I do for people, I don't, I don't charge above what the distribution platform charges. So for me, I mean, it's, it's definitely on the lower end. Um, I worked for a publisher, a vanity publisher for a few years and learned how I did not want to run my business. So mm. I do things a little bit differently. You know, I don't. I don't take rights. I don't take royalties. I don't do all of that business. So yeah, it's just all so different. And there's editors out there that charge per word, some that per, per page, some are flat fee. I mean, it's just so, so fluid. So when people okay. ask me how they should budget, I'm like, truly, <laughs> yeah. it's all about what you want. <laughs> okay. So. 
so. That does actually make sense. But I mean, I you, you gave enough specifics, I think that I've kind of got a, a good idea, which is good, so. Good. Yeah, good. that'd be very helpful. Awesome. You're just full of information, so. I try to I'm, be. I'm just finding out about this podcast. Like, how long have you been doing this? And uh, I launched this podcast last year. Okay. Um, and I'm having so much fun. So I talk with different authors and just decided um, when you agreed to come on, I had just kind of put that out there looking for people who wanted to become authors because I feel that there's a whole lot of people that have different fears and uh, questions, roadblocks, whatever it may be that are keeping them from actually becoming the author they desire to be. So I thought, well, let's talk to some other people and that are willing to share their reasons. And again, it goes back to you sharing yours. Now somebody else will be like, that's me too. And if he's going to do it, then I can do it. And so it was just kind of, it kind of took on its own life. And um, it's been really interesting to be able to talk to people about why they've written their books or why they want to write a book and just being able to get those backstories. So I'm really enjoying it. What would you say to the new author like me that needs to start putting words on paper? Like what's the, what are some of the things I should do to kind of get in the mindset of just being in the mood to write? I've never actually done it, so. So having that outline, right, where you map it out so you can actually see that it has an end point. That, that can be huge for people. Having a mock cover design done that you can print out and put over a book if you're motivated that way. So it's almost like a little vision board, like you have your, you have your cover design. It may not be your final one, probably won't be, but you can just get an image and it has your name on there. It has a title that you can think of and you're looking at it as if it's already finished. Other than that, you just simply need to put the time in the calendar. It needs to be an appointment with yourself. You have to do it. It's just as important that you write as it is that you do anything else because it's for you and it needs to have an end point. So if you just say every Tuesday at eight o'clock after dinner, I'm going to take a, I've spent time with the family and kids are in bed. I'm going to sit down. And I'm going to write for an hour. And I'm going to pull this one subject from my outline and that's what I'm going to write on. And so you just remain consistent with it. And before you know it, the book is done. I can actually coach somebody to write a fairly decent sized book and as far as length goes if they were to adhere to a very strict schedule and make it happen you can finish a book in about 45 days wow okay so most people aren't going to do that right i i, I see the ads on facebook all the time get your book out in 30 days no that's not going to be most people and it's not going to be your best work but it can happen Hmm. if you can be that devoted and disciplined with your time. But life happens to everybody. So it's typically not going to happen that way. Most people tell me they want to book out in six months and we end up getting it out in about nine. Oh, okay. So they have grandiose ideas of, yes, we're starting in April. I want this released in October. Okay, we'll try. And I coach them and I hold them accountable and we release in February. <laughs> okay all right so i mean it's just very standard uh for some reason people think they want to write over the summer and they forget that summer is full of activities mm -hmm. and that's going to take longer it may sound like a great idea but it's going to take longer and it's just it, it's all about kind of being flexible and realistic but you just got to write I mean, that is the main thing. You just have to be willing to be disciplined and write. Put it in your calendar. That's, that's excellent information. Um, so 
so you do coaching and you're kind of help you kind of what do you do is that like a weekly thing or how does that it is I do a lot of weekly accountability calls and when I am working with a client and we do have a deadline it's all about every week send to me what you've written I don't care if you met your goal of whatever you were going to write you send me what you did and knowing that you have it's almost like homework right you know you have to turn it in so you're at least going to do something and by having some sort of action every week it's going to get done eventually and that way i can also give you feedback as you go that was going to be my next question is what kind of feedback do you give yep when as the writing's going a lot of the feedback is based more on like you're kind of squirreling um this part was supposed to be on this topic and it's not, it's that, kind of yeah. <laughs> like you're kind of missing the mark. It's that kind of feedback as we go. I don't edit as the book is written because so much can change. Right. But I do give feedback. I'll try to catch things. I've had people that will talk in present tense and past tense and it gets very confusing trying to read a book that way. So I try to catch little nuances like that to try to keep, keep you on the right track so the whole book doesn't end up a complete mess by the time it's done um you know just things that i notice and sometimes it's just cheerleading you know sometimes what you wrote truly is just fantastic that week and i'm just going to tell you that and it's you're not always going to have corrective feedback so it's really just about helping make sure that you're able to get through it and get it done and keep you on track the whole way. I guess one of my last questions would be, how do you decide, especially with a book that I'm comparing to write on length? Because I mean, I went through so many things Mm -hmm. that um, I suppose I could write multiple small books or, you know, one really big one. I mean, I don't know. Um, I don't even know what big is in the world of books. (laughs) So with a book like yours, um, if I were to sit down with you, we would talk about the main, the main points that you would want to cover in your book, like the, the biggest highlights that -hmm. you're going to make sure you want to touch on. And then we're going to take each of those and we would break them down and we would take one at a time and break that down into smaller chunks. So tell me more about this main point. Tell me more about what happened there. And we would break it down. Then we'd take those thoughts that you shared and we'd break them down once more. So that third tier of breaking it down, that's where you pull your content. That's where you're going to start writing. And you'll build your chapters out of that. And you'll build like some books, they may end up having parts, you know, like part one, part two, however you want to label those. And within those parts are chapters. Um, when I have you writing on, on that smallest breakdown of thought that we've gone over, that's where you're going to be writing 500 to 1,000 words at a time. <clears throat> and so it's really easy to say, okay, this week I'm going to tackle three of these. So, you know, you're going to be hitting around 3,000 words. By the end, you're going to want, if you're thinking a good healthy sized book, you're going to be hitting around the 70 to 75,000 word mark by the time you're done. And that's going to bring you to, depending on how it's laid out and formatted, but it's going to be a good size book. It's going to be one that you feel it and it's a book. You're not going to look at it and feel like you're holding onto a pamphlet. Mm -hmm. So. Okay. Well, where do I sign up? <laughs> oh, podcast turned sales show. <laughs> Sorry, folks. <laughs> I will be happy to send you some information. I okay. um, right. But yeah, I really do. I love the idea of your book and I hope that you will work on that and make it come to fruition. I think it's going to do very good for you as well as the people you're trying to help. Well, I really appreciate that. That's all I can ask for is honest feedback and honest advice, so. Awesome.
awesome. Yeah. Well, great. once it's written and published, we'll have to have you back on so we can tell everybody where to find it. Okay. Yeah. That sounds good. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for being on today, Ian, and I enjoyed the candid conversation and I do look forward to seeing your book get published someday.